Hello and welcome to another update video about Bitcoin. In this video, we only want to focus here on the imminent short term wave count. Yesterday, I made a video and talked about the longer term wave count for Bitcoin. So if you're interested in looking at the larger context, also with long term targets, then take a look at my previous video, the last Bitcoin video I made just before this one. Okay, um, here in this current particular scenario we can first of all see that we broke out of this triangle to the upside yesterday that is not yet convincing though because bitcoin got rejected at the resistance zone here so this is the zone located between 16,930 and 17,100 pretty much we need to get above that level to get some clarity about a possible further increase in addition to that, what we see here at the moment to the upside is only three waves. So it's not really convincing yet. So this entire move actually. Um, so I would like to see at least one more leg up and then we could be carefully optimistic that things are changing. But at the moment, I could very well also just move that wave B up here and we're still looking for a lower C wave of this yellow wave two. Okay, and for that purpose, I have to move just the other waves to the right hand side, something that happens all the time if a move takes long. Okay, um, obviously we've got here on this chart a bullish interpretation and a bearish one. That is what you have to have, especially if you are in a triangle pattern or if you are in a range, because in the end it's the market who decides, you know, in which direction we break out. Um, we can only make some assumptions and prepare for basically both scenarios and then react to it as the market makes its decision. But um, it is definitely possible to move up from here in a yellow 1-2 setup or bullish scenario. It wouldn't even be necessarily bullish because even in the green count that you see here, which is the sort of yeah bearish pattern where we will make one more low, which we have to expect as well, because all of this here is an Elliott wave triangle um, in a bearish interpretation, yeah. Um, and also this hasn't broken yet, even though the trend line has broken, but the Elliott wave triangle, I'm going to show you that in a minute, hasn't actually broken yet. But um, even in this bearish interpretation, so either, either, so if we say we come down lower and make one more low, you could count this as a triangle or you can even say that, um, it, okay, if it's not a triangle, then it would be an A, second, here an A, B, and we're now moving up in C of four, which is just sort of an impulse within a correction. So the yellow count could also be the C wave in the way four, so a larger correction um, or part of a larger correction. Or it could be part of that red wave three, where we've got one, two, three, four, five, which would be the bullish breakout pattern. So at the moment, just need to keep options open. That is usually the case when you are in a consolidation pattern. Um, I did mention to you before, there will be the point where for Bitcoin, there will only be a bullish and a more bullish scenario. Yeah. Um, at the moment, there is a bullish and a bearish one very clearly because Bitcoin fulfilled our primary expectation in making one more low. So it did that here on the 9th of November. That was no surprise. It was expected for a long time, for weeks and weeks. Yes, FTX might have been the catalyst, but still a lower low for Bitcoin shouldn't have been the surprise. What was a bit surprising for some altcoins was how far they were actually sold off. Um, but as I said many, many times, the majority of altcoins was still fishing for lower lows and really only a few of these um, that I covered as well had bullish potential. So the uh, the latest sell-off in crypto generally was not a surprise from a chart point of view. Um, it was a bit surprising how fast it happened, but that's always what I tell you. You, know, you can't really, Elite Waves or generally any other method, you can't really predict um, how long a movement takes and how fast something is selling off. There are certain indications, but it, it, the market does it when it's when, when the market is ready, right? Um, that is also why it's so difficult with these triangles because the market can max out a triangle um, or even if, even if a trend line breaks here, um, the trend line might just 
simply shift and the whole triangle might extend out a little bit. So the bullish count, as I said, wave one up, wave two down here to 15,800 roughly. We'd be now in a wave three in the bullish count that can take us to 20K. There would be a wave four down and a wave five up. Um, and within this third wave in yellow, we've got our wave one in yellow. Uh, sorry, in the, in the third wave in red, we've got our wave one in yellow. The wave two, yeah, ideally for that, for that wave two, I'd, I'd be looking for another wave C, which comes below the low of the wave A. It failed to do, th do, to do so. Um, and I would primarily still expect a lower low in wave C, which means it should hold above the $15,800 level, but should go below the low of the wave A. That's sort of what I would ideally expect. Um, if it breaks above 17,100, it will go up straight away without making that lower low. That would be my expectation. Um, and that would all be either the bullish count or part of that deeper correction in wave four. At some point we will have to say that the wave four is getting unrealistic because if we then move up in the yellow five wave pattern, at some point, which would be the 50% Fibonacci retracement, so above roughly 18,550, above that level, a, a green wave four will get unrealistic. Then we have to focus more on the bullish count. We, however, can see here some short-term upside as well in green wave four, and then another sell-off as a possibility, as long as we are below 18,540. But we just need some clarity by the market in which direction is breaking out. So either above that red resistance zone or below the 16,070 level that would take out here our support zone and then we could be heading down and get some clarity. The other interpretation of the bearish count is the triangle in a way four. So where we will not see a stronger move up, but it would be a, um, yeah, a wave A, B, C, D, maybe E now. So it could have finished its E wave. It shouldn't really move any higher than that maybe a little bit, but it is constrained below 17,100 in the triangle pattern and would then in a next step sell off to the downside. And first indication that we're breaking out would be a move below that 16,070 level and then taking out the B wave low, which is at 15,800 will give us the confirmation. So these are the short term scenarios for Bitcoin that I see. Um, I don't necessarily have a preference. I think we can focus on higher as long as, we're as, as long as we are above this yellow support level, but really there isn't really a preference. And the reason for that is that both scenarios are likely. Bitcoin hasn't shown enough yet to make the bullish scenario very likely. It also hasn't shown enough yet to invalidate the bullish scenario. But I mentioned to you yesterday in the video and days and days ago that the longer this sideways movement takes, the more unrealistic will get a bullish breakout just because the impulsive nature of it is missing. And typically the longer something takes sideways, it increases the chances it's just a wave four, just a long consolidation before another sell off. Okay. And that's my update about Bitcoin. I hope you liked the update. If you did, please hit the like button, leave a comment and subscribe. And if you really like the content, then please check out the channel membership. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye-bye.